Let me introduce Greg Nelson. Greg owns Balsam Millwork and frankly has probably forgotten more about wood than most of us are ever going to know. So Greg, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, um, I own a company uh, not too far from here. We, uh, we manufacture hard and softwood uh, lumber products, uh, mostly molding, stair parts, lots of other types of uh, wood for many, many different industries. And uh, we do see a fair amount of lumber go through our facility. And you're out in the field a lot, you're looking at logs, you're helping spec what comes out of those logs, right? Yeah, I do travel and visit some sawmills. We work with sawmills and concentration yards, so we do go out and look at the logs that they're cutting. We don't own a sawmill, but we certainly go out and see and inspect a fair amount of our own uh, logs that are getting cut. Now give us the number about how many board feet of hardwoods go through your place in a month's time. Oh, we, uh, converting it into board feet from truckloads, it's uh, 30,000 to 50,000 board feet every month, sometimes a little a bit more. boatload of wood. That's a lot of wood, a lot of sawdust. Wow. Well, Greg is going to help us out. He's going to lend his expertise on our logs to lumber, help us get a better understanding of just how it is that usable planks come out of these big logs, and he's going to help us get a lot of good information on that. As a woodworker, I like to stay off the beaten path a little bit, and part of that includes working with species that I can't go to a hardwood supplier and get. It's one of the things I love about using my own sawmill to make lumber. You're looking at a pile here full of elm. A couple things are really cool about this. One is I can't buy elm from a hardwood supply. Two, the elm is being taken down by people who are logging in the city. It's pretty easy for me to get delivered here to my place. Three, look at cool pieces like this. This is going to be a beautiful piece of crotch wood that will come out of this. I could cut that into slabs for bowl turning. I could cut it into slabs for tabletops. There's pretty much no limitation except my own imagination once that's up on the sawmill about what I could get out of it. So this is the start. Pile of wood like this. From this I can start to process it into really anything I want once I've got the sawmill set up. So it's just a blast to run your own sawmill. Let's have a look at what it takes to get the material up onto the mill. Let's talk about backyard sawmilling. This is really cool. You can have a blast doing this. The first thing we need to talk about is handling logs. Now, don't be scared of this. You just got to be smart about how you do it. I never pick these babies up. You just can't do it. They weigh a bunch. They're full of water. They're dripping wet green, so they're way too heavy to pick up. But if you're smart about it, you can roll the logs. So this is the technique I'm going to use using a couple different tools here. I'm going to roll the log all the way up the ramp onto our sawmill and we'll be able to get this log cut into some great usable lumber. There we go, even though that log outweighs me by a bunch, a little bit of physics using these ramps, you can easily roll it up. We'll get it set up on the sawmill here and be ready to make some cuts. I've got the log rolled up here onto the log bed. These locks are holding it in place. Now what I can do here with the log saw is I can elevate the log, do that on both ends, get the log into just the right position so that it's oriented correctly, it's positioned correctly for my chainsaw cut. So this one I'm getting set up for plane sawing. A little bit more set up, we'll be ready to fire up the chainsaw and cut planks out of this elm log. Well, this log is getting set up here for plane sawing. Now remember, plane sawing is very simple. All we're going to do is cut through and through and through the log. Now, Greg, give us a prediction on what's going to happen under that branch down there. Well, you've got a branch that started probably when this tree was initially uh, starting to grow right from the sapling. So this, this branch goes clear into the center of the tree, into the pith. Uh, you're going to have some really cool grain coming out of here. So I would cut through and 
not completely waste this. See what you get out of there. And uh, for you hobbyists that are cutting these, these are uh, these are great areas to cut into to see what you get. So, so we got an opportunity there for some pretty absolute uh, some grain unique, patterns. Absolute unique grain pattern coming into this area right here into what uh, will be uh, some crotch type of material uh, from where this limb started to grow. Very cool. Well, let's look at what's going to happen here. Let me map this out for you. First, for plain sawing. Remember that we're simply sawing through the log like this. Of course, it's going to be a whole lot straighter than my felt tip lines are. Now, in order to make that happen, this is actually going to get cut into kind of a cube. And then you can see that as we cut each of those sections out of there, it's going to end up producing planks for us. So for the next step, we'll get the sawmill to the right elevation so that the chainsaw enters where we want it to enter. Simply take a flat top off of this to establish one flat surface. Now with that flat established, this whole log will get spun over so that flat is on the beds. That'll let us take a flat off the other side. We're well on our way to getting this material plane sawn. I've got the elevation set on the log so that I can take a flat off the top right here. We're working our way toward that perfectly square cant, and from that cant we'll be able to cut the planks we want. So right now we're ready to make this cut, get the top of this leveled off. Now, here on this end of the cut, there's just a little bit of bark left on the outside, and I'm not too worried about that because as these boards continue to get processed, especially once they're dry and they're in the shop, there'll be plenty of opportunity to cut that off later. Leaving it on now lets me get a little bit more yield out of this log. Now we've got a pretty square cant here. We can start taking planks out of So at this point, the steps are pretty easy. Raise the elevation, take off a board. Raise the elevation, take off a board. Work our way down. As we approach the pith here, we'll change the setup just a little bit. Now with this mill, what's pretty cool is that it's very easy to control the thickness of the planks that you're cutting. All I have to do is turn the crank here. Now, I just made this cut. That kind of zeroes everything. As I turn this crank, I'm going to count my clicks. Each click is a quarter of an inch. So five clicks, that's one and a quarter. That makes for a one inch thick plank and allows a quarter inch for the thickness of the chainsaw bar itself. So I'll raise the other end so that we're level. And then we'll be ready to start taking planks off. We'll just have a look at some of the lumber that's coming off of this piece of elm and this really speaks to the question of why would you want to do this. Where would you get elm for making furniture in your neck of the woods? The answer is you really can't buy it. So what's the relative price of this stuff? 
I don't know, because I can't go to my hardwood supplier and buy elm, but I can talk to somebody who's taken trees down, and I can get woods like this that I can cut on the sawmill. When you look at these two boards, we've got a beautiful book match between these two pieces. Uh, just an absolutely wonderful piece of crotch that we exposed here. So if I keep track of these two pieces of lumber, let them dry, when I bring them back in the shop, I'll be able to use them side by side in a project, book match these patterns back together. It's going to be just a beautiful addition to a woodworking project. So I, this is just one of the coolest things I've ever done, cutting my own wood like this, because one, you have access to species you might not otherwise have access to. You have great control over the material that you're producing. You can plane saw it, you can quarter saw it, you can cut it however you want. And you just run into surprises like this where who knew that that was in the log, but what an absolutely beautiful piece we're going to have out of this when this is dried and ready to go. So this backyard saw milling with the log of saw is just a blast to do, and it really gives you an opportunity to be creative with your own wood supply. This log is set up for our quarter sawing cut, and what I've done so far is I've cut the log into two. So this was a significantly bigger chunk when we first started. I got that cut in half. Now, Greg, one of the things people are going to look at is that although I cut it in two, the pith down here is obviously not bullseye center on the end grain. So tell us a little bit about what's going on inside this log. Well, not any log's going to be perfectly round. Even when they are perfectly round, the pith is not always in the center. So this pith may wander throughout the log, and you will end up with quarter and rip within a lot of your boards mixed. So uh, uh, when you go out and purchase the lumber that way, you will purchase quarter or rift or mixed. You will get a mix within that pack of wood or those boards. So, and it's due to the, the pith not being consistently in the center of your tree here. So what we got to do is find a way to grow perfectly straight square trees. It would make this whole milling process Correct. a lot Correct. easier. And then until we can do that, then the people saw on the logs got to deal with the inconsistency of the way that the tree grows. So I've seen that happen. I've seen in my own quarter saw and orders, you get a little bit of quarter, a little bit of rift, all mixed in one. Well, I think with that, we're ready to set this up. We can get the mill set so that we're ready to take this into the next step. What we'll do now is cut this again. And the next cut is going to be to actually produce the quarter right about there. So again, quarter sawing, the easiest way to remember this is we're going to start by quartering the log. Once that cut has been made, then we need to do this, this, and of course these cuts will happen to both of these quarter sections. So next step, we'll get the sawmill set up and we'll make some chips. So in order to do the quarter and cut on this log, we want to send the bar on the chainsaw right through the pit, right through the middle there. So I've got the bed on the machine set to the right elevation. So the log is correctly set up, ready to fire up the chainsaw and make the first of our quartering cuts. You got the light on. Good planning. Well, what do you think? Nice looking grain. You've got some nice character where some uh, branches were once in that log. You know, one of the cool things about having a backyard mill is that uh, as much lumber as what we have, uh, 
not only do I not inventory, I can't buy quarter sawn elm. So uh, one of the great things about having a small mill like this is that you are able to quarter sawn um, some of your own other species that are not commercially yeah, readily available. Yeah, just stuff you couldn't buy. You, you couldn't buy elm planks if you wanted to. Could not buy quarter Here sawn Here we're, we're really seeing the nice straight grain, one of the characteristics that we talked about with quarter saw and wood. This surprise that showed up in the center of the quartering cut, this old branch in here is really, really cool. I'm not real happy about this split. What kind of story does that tell us? Yeah, you do have a crack going on there, George, and you also have it picking up again right here. You're going to have that every time you cut through the center of a log. If you look at the end here, you've cut right through the center of that pith, which was the sapling as it grew. It meandered through that log, and it, as it grew up, that center will always split when you peel open these logs right down the center. Nothing, no reason to do anything different here. This is still a gorgeous looking board. You would simply rip off the edge and still have a great looking quarter sawn product out so of it. So we can save this character, but at the commercial level, what a mill is going to do is probably discard this piece altogether. Is that right? Yeah, or they'll downgrade the grade of it. Um, they will also cut these into uh, um, railroad ties and pallet parts. So they'll cut all the better product off the outside of the log, leaving the center intact and not cutting through this pith. Okay, so here though at the backyard mill, we can still get some use out of that piece by, like you said, doing another rip here that eliminates that split from the piece and saving that great looking piece of character here. What we're ready for now is to change the elevation of these beds and continue with the quartering cuts on these sections that we've got here. Now, one of the things we've talked about is quarter saw and wood cost more to make than plain saw. If we look at this log, the next cut we need is here. So, good thing we have Greg here because what we need to do is get this log flipped up and around so that this surface is up here at the top so that we can take this piece off. And that's the next step that we got to make here, the next setup we have to do on the sawmill. Yeah, part of the hassle in cutting quarter sawn to get such a beautiful product, there is a lot more handling time, and this does need to be spun around so that your flat face is riding against your mill here. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that now, but uh, it's well worth the time and effort. All right. Let's lift this one off, Craig. All right. Well, some more beautiful wood revealed. It's like reading a brand new book. You never know what you're going to see every time you turn the page and open it up. Now we just need to keep flipping, quartering, flipping, quartering, working our way through the whole log here. 